Some of you may know that I've been, that I had a brief beginning here in the Adventist Church. Unfortunately, I experienced some difficult challenges as a child, and that resulted in me questioning uh, authority, Christianity, God, and especially myself. The perception that I had started to form of God was pretty distorted, actually, and my self-image was even worse. I began to drift into darkness pretty quickly, and I took off headlong into the night. When you lose sight of your objective, or, or when your compass fails, things get pretty dark and pretty scary. I found myself making a lot of bad choices, which led to a lot of bad behavior. I stumbled around in self-pity, self-medication, and pretty much self-destruction. My thoughts had become dark and negative, and hope really seemed to disappear. I lost touch with my family, my church. I pretty much lost my way. I was hanging out with pretty bad people, doing drugs and even doing time. I was a real mess. But occasionally, beams of light would break through, my, through the darkness and I would see a path. Yes, Jesus was still there, holding out his hand to me, but I had lost faith. The way that I figured, I had slipped so far outside of the realm of grace or even possibility of change, I had lost hope. I felt abandoned, alone, and too much like a failure to believe that I could change. I was running away from people, from God, and from myself. Yet, Jesus was kindly staying there with me, not letting me out of his sight quietly waiting for my lifelong misguided temper tantrum to stop or to wear me out. He was always dealing with me more openly than I would admit. A ray of hope here, a glimmer of sunlight there. Sometimes they would shine through and I would realize that it was love that was reaching out to me of all people. And it was God's love at that. But I must have made Thomas look like a real believer because I kept doubting that it was for me or even real. And I could prove that I was not salvageable or lovable. I had no faith in God or myself. I felt completely hopeless. And sadly, I remained in this state for the largest part of my life. I was really damaged and I needed help, yet love is patient and love is kind. Throughout my life, people were caring for me, reaching out to me, sharing with me, inviting me to church, even praying for me. But I was stubborn. I wanted control of my miserable life. <laughs> I went through a long, dark, and lonely journey that eventually became unbearable and maybe even unforgivable. Karen, I have no idea how you stayed with me through all of this, but I am so blessed that you did. I am thankful for your prayers and your unending love, your patience. I'm thankful that you believed in me when I didn't or I didn't believe in any kind of a future either, really. Thank you for loving me and continuing to pray for me. I was in such dismal, selfish darkness. Somehow I, I thought that maybe I could find the, the help that I needed through going to church again. So a few years ago, I walked through those very doors and hung out for a couple of weeks. I even let Bob Kerr start some Bible studies with me. But then I chickened out and started to walk away again. You know how they say it gets darkest just before dawn? It's true, but it wasn't quite dawn yet either. It did get darker. I crashed. 
I went full Chernobyl and melted down. I completely lost touch with reality. And what little grass farm life that I thought I did have, it too was gone. I was scared. I was really scared. The whole meltdown thing kind of left me in, let's just say, a very compromised place in my thinking. I needed help. I needed serious help at that. Yet God, God was working in so many strange and unlikely ways. He is so patient, so kind, and so compassionate. Although I couldn't see it yet, it, it was turning out to be a very positive thing in my life. Even in all of my struggles, though, I couldn't seem to turn to God, to the obvious place for help. And I still didn't think that I had deserved any of his help. And likely I didn't. No, I'll take that back. I know I didn't. <laughs> but he did teach me a few things along the way. One, you never just you never know who just is on the Lord's side. Two, never underestimate the power of prayer. And three, what he can and wants to do with you is always amazing. He'll never leave you just where you are. I decided, well, no, actually, the doctors decided that I needed to go through some therapy. Okay, a lot of therapy. It had rescued me a few times in the past, so I started with a short stay in an outpatient program here in Orange County. This became a journey of repairing the dysfunctional pro thought processes that were going on and breaking down many of the strongholds that that Satan held in my darkened mind. It was a very necessary part of the healing that I needed. It helped me with some basics and getting the functional thinking back online. When I finished, <laughs> I realized that I still needed a lot of help. I found a remarkably caring and concerned and effective therapist here. I think God was working overtime on me through her. Thank you for her, Lord. Let me just interject this reminder. God hears the prayers of anyone calling out for help under any circumstances and for any reason. And when he offers help, take it. <laughs> I still see her every week, by the way, three years and counting. Thank you. And you know, through all of this, Jesus was still there saying, Hey, Alan, you need my help. Please take it. I can lead you out of this dark, self-destructive lifestyle, and I really would like to. I've been patiently waiting here this whole time. I want you back. I don't want to lose you. I love you. And that's when a real breakthrough came through. I knew it was true. I knew that I had so ignorantly and defiantly resisted him on my path of such dark selfishness. My heart literally began to melt. I begged him for mercy and to please work with me to help me crawl away from this messed up failure that I had become. As I became more and more aware of the condition that I was in, and the changes that were taking place, I realized that there was still a huge void where hope was supposed to be. Slowly, I took hold of his hand and began to trust and believe that he indeed loved me and wanted to rescue me. It was a concept I had a lot of difficulty with. It took me a while to start cooperating with him, and it began letting go of the sinful choices that I had invested myself in we started to climb out of the darkness week by week, month by month. Although sometimes I was still kicking and screaming and sliding right back down into that stubborn, ignorant selfishness, that tantrum didn't want to let go. I began to work through the failure image that I had of myself and to try and understand what this Jesus and his Heavenly Father were about and why they had the audacity to love me, a deliberate sinner. 
Come to think of it, why did anybody love me? Yet love is patient, and love is kind. And yes, love prevails. Then another door opened last October. My aunt encouraged me to watch a panorama of prophecy series online, and I decided to follow through with it. I quickly, de- I quickly realized, though, that I was really unfamiliar with my Bible as I went through the lessons. I had forgotten everything. I couldn't even fill in the blanks in the sentences. <laughs> and I realized how distorted my concept of God really was. I was still all out of whack. But he wasn't letting go of me. He was starting to change me. But he wanted something in return. He wanted me, and he wanted my time. He wanted my heart. I finished the lessons and somehow remembered about the Bible studies that Bob had started with me. So I went online and worked my way through them. Bob, I don't see you here today. But forgive me, I was too ashamed to do them in person again. But I did get the certificate. (laughs) I didn't, I really didn't know my Bible though. Soon I realized I was going to have to take another risk. I had no other options than to somehow trust God. So I found the courage and walked through these doors again. Although still in Thomas mode, (laughs) I was determined to follow God's leading. I felt so unworthy, so scared, and so ashamed. Yet Christ walked through that door with me. I thought that Pastor Joseph was taking a risk on me, but I quickly discovered that it was no risk to him per se. It, and it wasn't just his job either. It, instead, it was his Christ-like compassion reaching out to a lost soul, a fallen man in desperate need of salvation. He kindly started to talk to me, to pray with me, and to guide me. Meanwhile, others were working on me, encouraging me, praying for me. Some had been for a long time. My sisters Edna, Nancy, Kathy, my Aunt Linda, there were others, and now some of you. Thank you for not giving up on me. And even though I had begun to let go of the sinful life that I had chosen, the biggest hurdle still was that idea of forgiveness and of being loved. Pastor Joseph and those that were praying for me Help me with that too. I discovered that Jesus was all about kindness, forgiveness, and healing darkened minds. He was all about love. What an amazing God we have. As we talked and he shared truth, and as I studied the Bible again, I began to develop a healthier understanding of who Jesus is and that I could trust in the God who I'd run so far away from. And Jesus, in turn, began to develop in me stability and hope. I needed to respond to this incredible amount of grace being poured out to me. So I studied and prayed a lot. (laughs) I gave him my time, and I filtered out the things that, that were hindering my walk with him. I even joined a prayer group and a Bible study that I certainly wouldn't have before. And I highly recommend this, by the way. (laughs) Healing is rarely instantaneous, but it can be thorough if you stick with it. I believe that anyway. So I kept going with it, and guess what? Here I am in front of you to let you know that our God is indeed a very personal God. He is interested in our salvation our healing, our well-being, and he wants to draw us close to him in a very real and tangible way, right here, right now, and throughout eternity. But you must give yourself in return. It's a two-way street with him. This decision was in no way easy for me to come by,
but it too was a gift from, from him. And I know that I will have many challenges in my journey ahead, just like many of you might. And I still, I still have a lot of growth and, and maturing to do. And there are still places in my mind that need healing. But I have a loving God and a personal guide, a book full of extremely valuable truths and promises, and now a church full of loving Christians on their own journey. I have hope in a future. I have a light into my path. And just maybe I have an opportunity to help others who are struggling with a distorted perception of God. I recognize that I am loved, forgiven by a God who is all about mercy and grace, a God who is all about love. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my plea for help, for healing and redemption. Thank you for patiently waiting for me and continuing to rescue me and not abandoning me, especially when I am so weak and unworthy. For not letting go of my hand when I wouldn't hold on to yours. For influencing those in my life that love me, that keep on praying for me, and keep reaching out to me. Thank you for hearing and answering those prayers, Lord. Please forgive the sinful nature and tendencies in me, and please continue to correct my understanding of you and to work in my life, in my thinking, and to change my behavior. And Lord, please help me to reflect you and become a helper to those around me that need you in this broken world. Thank you for being merciful and graceful to all of us. Thank you so very much for your sacrifice, your gift of salvation, and for the promise of a future with you in eternity. I'm humbly honored in, to know that I am loved and accepted and a forgiven child of the living God. My new life is a gift from him and my thoughts, my words, and my behavior should always reflect his love for me and for others. How may I help you, Lord?